Good morning. Uh, I'm Dalton Potter uh, of the Potter Violin Company. And um, we're here this morning uh, just kind of answering some questions on varnish. Um, when it comes to musical instruments, there's a, a number of different ways that they are protected from the elements. And that's really what the, what the purpose of putting varnish on an instrument is, whether it's a, a guitar or a cello or a violin. Um, folks figured out three or four hundred years ago that if you put something on the outside that was a clear coating, it would protect the wood from maybe cracking or getting dirty. So uh, it's just been a tradition now for many, many, many years for people to use whatever kinds of varnishes they had available. There's a lot of legends regarding Stradivarius and his varnish, uh, some of which are, are probably true, some of which we'll never know about. But uh, for the most part, we do understand from uh, gas spectrometry how the elements that were available to him were used to make varnishes. And uh, so it's not quite as much of a mystery as it might have been in the past. The exact method that he used is something that was lost in time. There's no uh, recipes in his lab or in his workshops. There's no, nothing in his papers that say how he, how he did that. And there are a number of people who have ideas. But what we're doing here this morning is just sort of going over the various elements that we have available. Now you can see in front of me, um, I've got this table laid out. And uh, the interesting thing about varnish is that what we really want to do is we have these instruments and they have such beautiful wood that we don't want to hide the wood when we're trying to protect it. We want to enhance it. And uh, violin varnish has a funny characteristic in that we call lensing, which basically means it not only coats and protects the wood, but it also has an optical quality that actually makes it so you can, it feels like you can see into the wood, almost like you're looking into the bottom of a swimming pool, if it's made correctly. Um, these days, many of the student instruments that you'll see will have what we call spirit varnish, which means that it's varnish that's made from uh, materials that are dissolved in alcohol. That's what spirit is. And that's very common. It's not, uh, it's not a bad thing or a good thing. It's just that's the way they're made. Uh, the people who really pioneered good spirit varnishes uh, were probably the French back in the 1850s. Um, they sort of changed how people looked at making violin varnish. Up until that point, almost all violin varnishes had been oil. Now, oil takes a lot longer to dry. Uh, it actually doesn't dry, it, uh, it uh, polymerizes. And uh, we, by that we mean it gets hard without necessarily evaporating. Spirit varnishes uh, made by dissolving materials like what you see in front of me in alcohol and uh, then they're mixed together and when they're put on the violin the, bio, the alcohol evaporates out and it leaves these materials. So what I have in front of me is, is sort of a, a just a sampling of things. There's a lot of things that can go into it. Um, we have benzoin which is what you see in this little jar here but I put some down on the paper and benzoin is kind of interesting. It uh, sm smells a little bit like cookies. Uh, it's sort of got a vanilla smell to it. Um, over here we have mastic. Mastic has a sort of a medicine-y smell. It's a very, uh, it's a very brittle kind of a resin. Um, those two uh, uh, resins are things that are often in spirit varnishes. Then we also talk about oil varnishes, and in oil varnishes there are things that we don't, we don't put in. Um, they, they're two separate kinds. In the oil varnishes they're actually cooked for a long time, and they start out as, um, as something called colophony or resin, which uh, you can see in the jar here. And when, you, when we get it, it's actually clear. And then we cook it for hours and hours and hours at a very high heat, and it winds up having a beautiful sort of a reddish-brown color to it. Uh, and then we have to add oils and cook it some more and do some things. That's all very complicated stuff. But basically what you need to know is these materials that you see in front of me um, represent resins and even pigments. This stuff here, this little powdery stuff that you see, that's called matter root. And that's actually, that goes through a chemical process by which it turns into a pigment very much like paint. That uh, when it's done properly, it winds up being a very beautiful transparent orange brown. In fact, you'll see some of that on the violin over here. We go through the process of, but the violin starts out as bare wood, just like you see this. And then we put on what's called a ground coat, which is the initial sealing coat. And the ground coat is going to often make the instrument look like it's older than the fresh white wood. But again, it's supposed to be sort of transparent, so you can really see the grain 
popping nicely on that. And then at the end of the day, there's going to be some colors, like the matter group that we talked about, mixed in with the varnish, which will enhance the, the beauty of the wood, hopefully without hiding it. So here you see a, a beautiful example by a, a person that varnishes violins for us here in the shop that, um, that put on this uh, colored varnish in order to enhance it and make it look like it's a very nice, friendly, comfortable violin to play. Um, after all of these things are mixed together and they're cooked, they wind up having, it's funny, in the jar, it looks like it's very, very, very dark and gooey. But what's fa fascinating about it is that when we take a, just a little tiny bit of it and we smear it on a slide like this, you can actually see how nice and clear that actually is. If I put it against the paper, you can see it, or if I put it up against the, the violin, you can see that also. So it's, sometimes it's a little bit, a little bit confusing because you think you're putting varnish on that's going to make the instrument look black, and it actually winds up looking beautiful. We use a number of different brushes, of course. So that's uh, that's basically it. The um, the oil varnishes are different because they have to be cured in either sunlight or ultraviolet light, as opposed to just drying and evaporating what the spirit varnishes do. And uh, you're always welcome to contact us at the shop if you have questions. We actually make these instruments here and we cook our own varnish.